I've heard industry rumblings of Cedar Fair executives checking out Velocicoaster at Universal's Islands of Adventure and being insanely impressed, enough to the point where they are looking to do multiple LSM launching roller coasters with Intamin. But again, please take that with a grain of salt. Alrighty, okay, so I have an interesting video for today and it's completely going off of some tea or I guess a grain of salt that uh, El Toro Ryan dropped in his newest video that he just posted. If you haven't watched it, definitely go check out uh, El Toro Ryan's newest video. It was sent to me, but I do watch all of his videos. To be honest, I actually find El Toro Ryan's videos to be some of the best in the industry. Uh, it, he's one of the only people I actually watch. I'm not that interested in, like, roller coaster content. I'm more of a theme park enthusiast, but I literally make it a habit to watch his videos. So definitely go check out El Toro Ryan on YouTube. He's an engineer, and he has some of the best understanding of amusement attractions and how theme parks operate and work. So if you wanna know really detailed information, definitely check him out. But nonetheless, he dropped <laughs> literally near the end of his video uh, that Cedar Fair was supposedly checking out Velocicoaster at Universal Studios and they were extremely impressed and they could potentially be looking to add an LSM Intamin coaster to some of their parks. Um, when it comes to information from channels, I can tell you firsthand, being a Wonderland channel, you do develop sources. And a channel like his being so detailed and so informational and a much larger scale audience, I could only imagine the sources that El Toro Ryan has. So when he drops tea like that, I don't take it with a grain of salt. I kind of believe it. Like, I, I really do believe it. He's proven himself to know what he's talking about. It appears that he's 100% right about everything he said about Top Phil Dragster. So I'm really excited and really hopeful that this tea turns out to be truthful as well. Now I'm going to talk about my thoughts on this whole thing. Um, I Personally, I agree with him when he said that he was surprised by this news because of the Top Phil Dragster Zamperla rumors. And I am too. I am extremely surprised. But when I sat down and thought about it, I was like, it's really not that shocking if you think about it. Intamin is one of the few that build the kinds of attractions that they have. Um, and to replicate some of these attractions that the Cedar Fair chain is going to need would be next to impossible. Not impossible, but next to. Like, for example, when it comes to launch coasters, you could build Premier, you could build Mock. It's just not the same as what you're seeing on the screen right now, Velocicoaster and LSM Intamin Coaster. Now, when you look at some of their parks, they are lacking a really intense, high-capacity launch coaster. Cedar Point isn't technically. They have Maverick, which is one of my favorites. They also have Top Fellow Dragster, which should be making an epic return in 2024. But when you look at parks like uh, Canada's Wonderland, King's Island, and Carowinds, those three big parks, they are lacking a high-intense LSM coaster. They're also Cedar Fair's three biggest parks outside of Cedar Point. Now, when I come back to the whole topic of Cedar Point to loop it in, Cedar Point could be looking to add an LSM high-intense coaster um, again, like Velocicoaster. And with the direction and the goals that they have of Cedar Point, they could be looking for a highly themed, high-capacity uh, LSM launch coaster like Velocicoaster. Now, what also is interesting is them looking at Velocicoaster and not the one over at Bush Gardens. The name has slipped my mind again. I'm a theme park enthusiast, so sometimes I forget things. But they have a new LSM launch coaster, Intamin launch coaster over at Bush Gardens. I believe it's Williamsburg. I don't want to get that wrong. Um, but I, I'm surprised they weren't looking over there. I mean, they could have, but we only know the rumor to be Velocicoaster. Now, when I, you think about it that way, it could be along the terms of the higher capacity, the more trains. Now, I don't think Cedar Fair will ever be purchasing 12 trains. Um, but I could see Cedar Fair spending like $60 million on a new coaster for Cedar Point. I can't see them spending $60 million on a new coaster for Canada's Wonderland, Knott's Berry Farm, or Carowinds, or Kings Island. I can see them just spending $30 million, 35 max, maybe $40 million max. But I honestly do think that Cedar Point has a really bright future in terms of investments. I could see Cedar Fair even potentially holding back some investments at other parks if they needed to build 
a really high cost investment. So let's say, and these numbers I am just putting out there to get a point across. These are nothing I've heard. But let's say Cedar Fair really did want to go all out for Cedar Point and spend, let's say, $80 million, $100 million on a new attraction like some of these other big parks like in Florida. I could see that. I really could see that. I could see them holding back attractions at every other park and spending what they usually spend. They spend roughly around $150 um, to $200 million now a year on attractions for in investments. I could see them holding back and spending $100 million of that budget on Cedar Point if they wanted to. Again, they are trying to make Cedar Point a tourist attraction. It already is for a lot. But if they wanted to make Cedar Point that really standout park, I could see them really investing $100 million. I know it, I know that's like a crazy like speculation, but it's really not if you think about it. Uh, th they have a lot. Like Cedar Point is extremely well-rounded, and now they need to start thinking outside the box. And I think a impressively themed LSM launch coaster like Velocicoaster would do wonders at Cedar Point. Does Canada's Wonderland, King's Island, Carowinds, and Knott's Bay Farm need that level of theming? No, 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 no. I think that they would only spend 30 to $40 million tops um, on a new coaster for those parks. So again, if they're looking at Velocicoaster, I have a feeling it would have been mostly because of Cedar Point. And outside of that, I do see them adding it to other parks. I don't think it was just Cedar Point. I just think they would go all out for Cedar Point. Um, I know that's crazy. I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, that's absolutely insane. That's a crazy sp speculation. But I really don't think it is. I, I, I fully suspect to see Cedar Point being invested in in higher numbers down the road. Um, I could see like six to eight to 10 years from now, them spending $100 million, like 60 to $100 million on new attractions for Cedar Point as they look to make Cedar Point that like really well known tourist attraction in North America. I could potentially see Canada's Wonderland being that and Knott's Berry Farm. They would never spend that much money on King's Island because it's so close-ish to Cedar Point. Um, Carowinds, I could see it is a very important park in a very warm climate um, for Cedar Point or Cedar Fair. So I could totally see them investing maybe, you know, starting to get up to the 40s, 60s if they needed to to draw in people because they are trying to become year round. Um, and Canada's Wonderland seems to be solely focusing on theming. Uh, there seems to be a really big focus, but that seems to be a Cedar Fair thing. The new Dorney Park Dive Coaster appears to have a really high level of theming. The new flat ride coming to Canada's Wonderland has a really high level of theming. Carowinds' new area is really impressively themed. Actually, a lot more so than I thought. When I first saw the area, I thought it looked tacky. But with the recent construction tour that they just did, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited for the future of Cedar Fair. And I honestly think this latest tea that El Toro Ryan dropped, um, I really hope it turns out to be true because it would further what I've been suspecting that Cedar Fair is going to start doing, um, investing in higher cost attractions. I never predicted Intamin. Please don't take that. I, I truthfully never saw them working with Intamin ever again. But now that I'm thinking about it, as I just said earlier on in the video, it makes sense. We're going to need drop towers. A lot of the drop towers at the Cedar Fair parks are aging. And Intamin just has like a really good product, certain products that other companies can't offer. Now, BNM is coming out with the surf coaster, but you can only build the same coaster over and over again before even the general public starts to think that it's the same attraction. Actually, if you even look at a park like Canada's Wonderland, I've noticed general public do kind of struggle to differentiate Leviathan and Behemoth. A lot of them do kind of view them as a similar-ish attraction. I've definitely heard that in conversation. I wonder if you guys have too. And I have a feeling if you build too much of the same product, it is just becoming redundant. And it seems like Cedar Fair may be hyper aware of that and looking to build high intense attractions at some of these parks that don't have that. Cedar Fair is uh, Cedar Point is really well rounded in terms of its intense versus milder attractions. Whereas you look at Canada's Wonderland, it's a park that is extremely mild in terms of thrill. So it'd be really cool to see a park like Canada's Wonderland build either a mock extreme spinner or an intimate LSM launch coaster. Um, or, or even a GCI down the road. But I definitely look forward to what this potentially could mean for the Cedar Fair Parks. Um, I will definitely be paying a lot more attention 
um, to Stockholders Call. There is one coming up in about a week for Cedar Fair. So I'm super excited to listen to that. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for watching this video and hearing my thoughts about this whole intimate rumor. I definitely will have more in the podcast tomorrow at 8 p.m. Surya and I will be going live on YouTube for our weekly podcast. And we are definitely going to talk about this as a whole. Anyways, thanks so much, guys. Hopefully you are staying warm. We are having really cold temperatures here in Canada right now. Um, so stay warm. I'm staying indoors all day today and just staying out of the cold. Um, have a good one, guys. Bye.